Welcome to this technical guide on colony forming cell assays. This is the first of three technical guides. This video will discuss some of the background to the colony forming cell assays for hematopoietic cells. The second video will demonstrate how to use methylcellulose colony grow reagents and Cameo 4 assay kits, which are miniaturized colony forming assays. The third guide will demonstrate the Cameo 96 assay, a methylcellulose colony forming assay that can be used to measure both proliferation and differentiation of cells grown in colonies, as well as standardizing the classic colony forming assay. The original colony forming unit assay or CFU assay was published independently by Bradley and Metcalf in Melbourne, Australia and, in, and by Plutzlink and Sachs in Rechovot in Israel in 1966. The assay initially identified mouse progenitor cells of the granulocyte macrophage lineage and a conditioned medium that was later found to contain a humoral factor that was called colony stimulating factor. The cells were identified in colonies that had been produced under clonal conditions in agar. The cells giving rise to these colonies could not be identified and were called units, hence the name colony forming unit or CFU. We now know that these units are actually cells, so the term colony forming cell or CFC assay is also used. In 1970, Pike and Robinson adapted the assay for human cells that is still used today, especially in the core blood field. In the early 1970s, Arthur Axelrad and his group in Toronto, Canada, showed that erythropoietic uh, precursor cells called colony forming unit erythroid or CFUE could be grown as colonies in a plasma clot culture. The methylcellulose version of the assay, which is used today for erythropoietic cells, was introduced by Iskov and his colleagues in 1973. Since that time, colony forming assays have been developed for numerous stem progenitor and precursor cells of the lymphohematopoietic system, and recombinant growth factors are now used. The basic method for performing a colony forming assay is shown here and is typified by the macro colony forming cell assay. In this assay the basic components of methylcellulose, serum growth factors and target cells as well as other constituents are mixed together in a tube. A typical volume for this assay is about 3 milliliters providing sufficient reagent to prepare duplicate 35 millimeter petri dishes each containing one milliliter of reagents. Depending on the species and cell populations being cultured, the cells are usually incubated for seven to 14 days, after which the colonies can be counted under an inverted microscope. As you can imagine, this macroculture uses considerable volumes of reagent as well as cells. In 1982, we published a miniaturized version of the assay that requires a total volume of only 0.6 milliliters. Instead of duplicate 1 milliliter cultures, the assay uses a 35 millimeter Petri dish with four small wells that each contain 0.1 milliliters of the methylcellulose reagents. This miniaturized version of the assay is called Cameo 4 and is described in the second technical guide in this series. To understand what the colony forming assay detects, it's necessary to consider the organization of the hematopoietic system that you see here. All colony forming cells have the ability to proliferate. However, all colony forming cells are also difficult, if not impossible, to morphologically identify under a microscope. We use the colony forming assay to identify the functional ability of these more primitive and often rare cells. Stem and progenitor cells have, until recently, been identified only by their ability to form colonies when stimulated with individual or combinations of growth factors and or cytokines. This changed with the development of the Hemogenics Cameo 96 and Halo platforms. These pictures show what some colonies look like when viewed under the microscope. 
The ring around each colony shows that although the colony is made up of smaller units that have come together during the culture period, it is actually counted as a single colony. It is clear that the form and even the color of the colony is dependent upon the cells from which it is derived. This means that the colony forming cell must both proliferate and differentiate in order to identify the colony. The size of the colony is an indication of the proliferation ability of the colony forming cell itself. The larger the colony, the more primitive the colony forming cell. Although proliferation is required, it is important to emphasize that, prolifer that uh, proliferation cannot be measured using the colony forming cell assay. The colony forming cell is identified by its differentiation ability. In other words, the CFC assay or the colony forming cell assay is a, differen is a differentiation assay, not a proliferation assay. Here are some of the applications for which the colony forming assay is used. Until the introduction of Cameo 96 and Halo, the classic colony forming assay was the only functional growth assay to detect primitive and rare cells of the hematopoietic system. As a functional growth assay, it is also a viability assay. The clonal ability of cells can be used as a property to detect proliferation ability, but as I've said, not to quantify it. The primary use of the colony forming assay is to detect differentiation potential and ability. This is useful for basic research purposes as well as to determine the effect of compounds on the differentiation and maturation process. But the colony forming assay has significant drawbacks and problems. With the introduction of new advanced assays, a number of these drawbacks to the colony forming cell assays have become apparent and include the following. The assays require manual enumeration and therefore are highly subjective. A high degree of technical expertise is required to learn and identify different colony types. The high coefficients of variation or CVs experienced with the colony forming assay are due to methyl cellulose dispensing errors and colony counting. Due to the requirements for the cells to differentiate in order to identify the colonies, the assay requires long incubation periods. The assay lacks external standards and controls that do not allow assay calibration and standardization. This in turn means that the assay cannot be validated according to regulatory requirements. The assay, the assay is operator intensive, time consuming and expensive to perform. These factors should be taken into account when deciding upon an assay for a particular application since an inadequate assay can lead to misconceptions and false conclusions. A clear example of this is the notion that the CFU assay is a potency assay for cell therapy products. The drawbacks of the assay shown in this slide preclude it from being a potency assay. This will be discussed in detail in our technical guides on potency for cell therapy products. Be sure to look at the videos on Colony Grow and Cameo 4 and Cameo 96. Please contact us with any questions. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.